FSU went toe-to-toe -to -toe with their biggest conference rival and stuffed the Hurricanes in a locker this weekend. We're going to talk about it next. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Thanks for coming to the channel. I appreciate all your love and support. We're closing on 5,000 subscribers, and that's really, really cool. Appreciate each and every one of you. The recruitment of Daryl Jackson is one of the crazier in recent memory, according to some people that I've been chatting with, but he is officially enrolled at Florida State. Some breaking news just hit the timeline and everywhere else that he is officially a Seminole, and we can all put this to rest. But before we do that, we are going to talk about it, and we're going to talk about what Miami tried to do and the links that they tried to go to, the shadiness that went down with this recruitment. We told you about it yesterday, but a quick recap. If you haven't caught up on this or you don't know exactly what's gone on, Jackson went into the portal when this window opened, announced pretty quickly for FSU. There were some concerns around the health of his mother, a sickness, a medical issue there. Wanted to be closer to her, wanted to be closer to home, and so he announced for the Seminoles. Everything seemed pretty fine. It didn't seem like anything too crazy would happen here, but within the last week, Miami decided to circle the wagons. Why'd they do that? They went 0-4 in the transfer portal, and they've got nothing at defensive line next year. It is terrible, but I can't wait to see how bad their defensive line is going to be. They decided to go back to Jackson, who technically never was taken off of financial aid, according to a couple of people that I've spoken with down there at Miami and around that program. And so he could have just gone back to classes at Miami, but he didn't, thank the Lord. Miami put a full court press on here, and there was some concern this weekend with him taking trips to Miami, with him staying in Tallahassee. What would happen? There were times that Florida State felt good, times that Miami felt good about this one, but he did decide to stay in Tallahassee and, again, has officially enrolled. Now, this is where the entire story gets wild. I want to tell you about what Miami tried to do, what went down. Just before we do that, I want to tell you about our friends at Garnet and Gold. You can go to garnetandgold.com to pick up all of your licensed FSU merch and gear. You can use code NOSLAW, N-O-S-L-A-W, to save 15% on your order at garnetandgold.com. They are leaders when it comes to licensed apparel, FSU merchandise, vintage apparel. I love this hat that I'm wearing here. Check out garnetandgold.com. Use code NOSLAW. You're shopping for FSU gear anyway. Make sure that you're saving money at garnetandgold.com. They give back to our boosters and our NIL. NOSLAW at checkout. Miami wanted this kid and they wanted him bad. Again, they've got nothing at defensive tackle and they're desperate right now. They couldn't pick up anything in the portal. And so they wanted this Jackson kid back on their defensive line badly. He's a, he was a good player for them. He was inconsistent at times, but he would certainly be one of the top two or three players on their entire defense, certainly their best defensive lineman. And I've spoken with a couple of people close to this recruitment, and I can confirm two things. Number one, Miami offered Daryl Jackson a stupid amount of money. That is a direct quote, a stupid amount of money to stay enrolled at the U. We understand that they're very, very aggressive in the NIL game. I don't think that this is shocking to anyone that Miami would offer a big amount of money to a recruit, but they did here, and they tried their very best to get him to stay. The other thing that's crazy that they tried to do that maybe this will be reported on, maybe it won't, but I've confirmed that they also tried to reach out to at least three other members of FSU's roster to try and get them to come to Miami with Jackson. There was some concern around this. We know that this is going on. I don't want to say that Miami's the only school doing this and reaching out to players on active rosters, but they did it here. And there was some concern that Florida State might lose a couple of guys because Miami is, again, very aggressive in this NIL space. However, much like their attempts to score touchdowns against the Seminoles this year, they were unsuccessful. They went 0 for 4 and were wildly unsuccessful when it came to poaching guys off of FSU's roster, Jackson included. Talk about egg on their face. They couldn't keep what was not only theirs, they also couldn't get what was ours. And now they're left with nothing on that defensive line. I cannot wait to see Trey Benson run wild and break tackles next year in Doak against Miami. This year, it always means a lot. This year is going to mean so much more. 
We told you yesterday in our video that Miami was doing their very best to cast doubt in Jackson's mind regarding his waiver, whether or not the NCAA would approve that. Again, is that unethical? Is that bad when you're considering the fact that it does have to do with the health of his mother, that he's trying to get the NCAA waiver? Most of you responded in the comments that it was shady of them, that it was crappy of Miami to do this. I'd rather you guys make your own decisions and me not tell you whether something is good, bad, indifferent, whatever. But it did seem that overwhelmingly you guys thought that that was not a good thing. I've been told, based on some conversations that I've had and was talking to some people that are pretty close to this recruitment, there is a large swell of confidence that Jackson's waiver will get approved and Florida State will be very, very aggressive in getting this approved. I want to also clarify something. I don't think that Miami can do anything to prevent him from getting a waiver. I think it was mostly around casting doubt in his mind that it would get approved. I do think that there is a hardship form that Miami could potentially sign off on that would make things easier, but I don't think that they can hinder the process. I expect Jackson's waiver to get approved and I expect him to be an active member of Florida State's roster and team coming up in the fall. Here's what this all comes down to. Miami is shady when it comes to this stuff. And they're some of the worst in the country when all of this stuff goes down. Like I said, there are people on every roster getting talked to by several colleges. And I understand that. I, I, I know that that's just the game that we're in right now with college football. Right or wrong, that's happening. But Miami takes it to another level and they are some of the worst out there. They've been the worst from the beginning and they're gonna continue to be the worst from the beginning. It's just very encouraging to see that Florida State is aggressive in not only retaining players, but keeping players from being taken by their biggest rivals. Florida State's very aggressive in this NIL world, and they're able to compete and win battles against the absolute elites in this sphere. And I think that should be encouraging for FSU fans. Jackson's a huge gift for the Knowles, and we're going to talk about this defensive line more in depth over the next nine months leading up to that LSU game in Orlando. But I'm telling you, this defensive line and the depth that it is going to have is going to be remarkable. It's I said it yesterday, and I do not mean to be cliche with this or speak in hyperbole. It is going to be Clemson levels of depth when it comes to defensive line at Florida State. I think Florida State's going to have a top five to 10 defensive line in the country next year. And we'll break all that down going forward and talk about that. But I think what Jackson does for you and what he does for the rotation of having your top three of Fabo, Fisk, and Jackson makes you a serious competitor. You know what we've got at defensive end with Jared Verse and other guys there that may be named soon. But I think that defensive line is something that's going to be special. And I think they're going to be phenomenal for the Knowles. Getting this win means so much more than just one player. Again, it probably meant about four players that you kept on this roster and that you kept intact. Shutting down Miami is always a big deal, but doing it the day of enrollment, doing it when guys are hitting classes today and locking them in for the rest of the year is huge. And it always feels good to beat the Hurricanes. You only usually get to do it once a year, right? When you play them on Saturday in the fall, but getting to do it in a recruitment like this that went back and forth and up to the final minute is also pretty special as well. Big shout out to all those involved for keeping Jackson here. And big shout out to the Knowles for retaining their roster integrity uh, and whatever the opposite of a shout out is uh, down there sending it to Miami uh, because they're just an embarrassment and a clown show. And, and I'm glad that they lost out here. Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. We've got more content coming from you. you. I've just got inside info on a probable commitment that the Knowles will pick up here soon. I feel really, really good about that. So make sure that you're subscribed and you have notifications turned on because we will break that news as soon as it happens. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Love all the support. We'll talk to you soon. Go Knowles.